Hi and welcome in this new video, hope you're doing well, hope your day is great and stay to discover how to receive notifications from Airflow to Microsoft Teams. And not only you will discover how to do it, but you will discover two ways of doing it. And the first one is pretty common, but the second one is pretty amazing as not only it's a better way to receive notifications from Airflow to Microsoft Teams, but it's also a way to receive notifications to pretty much any service notifications you can think of. Hi, my name is Mark Lamarty, Head of Customer Education at Astronomer, best-selling instructor on Udemy. And if you don't want to miss any videos about Airflow, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. That will help me a lot. So now let's begin. So what is a notification? Well, simply put, a notification is nothing more than a message to warn you, to alert you about something specific. In the context of Airflow, you might want a notification when a data pipeline succeeds, or when a task fails, or when a task succeeds, and so on. So you want to receive a notification from Airflow to a specific service, in this example, Microsoft Teams. But that could be something else. It could be Slack, it could be by email, and so on. To emit a notification from Airflow, you need to define a callback. And Airflow has many callbacks, as you can see here. You have unsuccess callback, so when a task succeeds or a DAG succeeds, on failure callback, when a task fails or a DAG fails, then you have SLA miss callback, when a task misses, it's defined SLA, on retry callback, when a task is up for retry, and finally, on execute callback, just before a task begins executing. Keep in mind that SLA miss callback is defined only at the DAG level, whereas unsuccess callback and on failure callback can be defined both at the DAG level and task level, whereas on retry callback and on execute callback are defined only at the task level. So now you know about the callbacks, it's time to see how to configure Microsoft Teams to receive notifications and then how to create the data pipeline to send those notifications. At this point, at this point, to follow the video, you need to have a business account on Microsoft Teams, otherwise you won't be able to get this interface and create your channel. That being said, on Teams, you can navigate to your team, and in this case, we have only one, which is my company. Obviously, it will be something different for you. Then click on the dots and click Add Channel to create a new channel. Here, you need to specify your channel name, so let's say Airflow then a description if you want, and choose a channel type. So here we can say standard as we want to share it with the team. And click on create. So just like that, you have created a new channel. It is as simple as that. The next step is to create a webhook so you can receive notifications in that channel from Airflow. For that, click on the dots, and then manage channel, and click on edit under connectors. And from there, you can search for incoming webhook, and as you can see, it is used to send data from a service to your Office 365 group in real time, so your channel. Click Add, click Add again, and let's call this incoming webhook Airflow underscore webhook, and then create. And as you can see, we obtain a URL corresponding to the webhook. So we will use this URL in our Airflow data pipeline to send the notifications. It's very important that you keep this URL somewhere, so let's copy it, and then click Done. And you can close this window. Okay, so back to the channel. Now we have the webhook configured. It's time to create the data pipeline and send the notifications to this channel. As usual, you don't have to type everything yourself. You will find the code in the link in the description below, so it will be easier for you to follow this video. That being said, to set up and run Airflow locally, I will use the Astro CLI. If you don't know what the Astro CLI is, I strongly recommend you to take a look at it. It is the easiest and fastest way to run Airflow in local, but if you don't want to use it, that's fine. It will work with Docker Compose or whatever solution you want, as long as you have Airflow running on your machine. So in the folder DAGs, let's create a new DAG called mydag py, and then we can create the data pipeline. Nothing fancy, this pipeline has two tasks, A and B, and the second task will fail each time we run the DAG. So let's do it. First, we import DAG and task from the decorators, and then we use chain to define the dependencies, and then we import airflow fail exception to make a task fails. This is very useful. Then under the imports, we define the DAG object, as you can see using the DAG decorator, and the name of the DAG is my DAG. And then we create the two tasks. So first, task A that prints good on the standard output, 
and then task B that fails as we use airflow fail exception. Then last but not least, we define the dependencies with chain. So we execute A first and then B, and we call my DAG to make sure that airflow is aware of that this file is a DAG. So that's it, nothing crazy, right? It's a simple pipeline using the task free API and task B will fail each time we run it. With this pipeline, the next step is to create the function that will send a notification as soon as this pipeline fails to Microsoft Teams. So for that, we are not going to create this function in the DAG file, but instead we will do it in the folder include. So in this folder include, create a new file, let's say notifications, and then we create a new Python function, notify underscore Teams. And that function takes a parameter context that will contain all the information about our DAG, task instance that failed, and so on. By the way, if you don't have this folder include, it's fine. For simplicity, you can create this function right into the DAG file above the DAG object, but I strongly recommend you to create another folder like include where you will put the functions that you can call in your pipelines so you can keep your DAG files as clean as possible. Back to the function, here we need to create the message corresponding to the notification we will send from Airflow into Microsoft Teams. And for that, you need to take a look at the following documentation to learn how to create that message. There are many options that you can use as you can see here, so feel free to take a look at it, especially if you want to customize your message notification as much as you want. So back to the code, here we first print on the standard output the following message, sending Teams notification. This is useful if for some reason the callback fails, you will be able to see that message in the scheduler logs. Then under this message, we import requests as we need to make a HTTP request to the webhook to send the notification to Microsoft Teams and we define the notification. So again, take a look at the documentation if you want to understand exactly what are those fields, but basically we will print a message with the title airflow task failed, as well as the name of the task that has failed. And you will see some additional information about the DAG where the task failed, such as the logical date, a link to the logs, and then a button to access the logs from Microsoft Teams in the Airflow UI. So once we have described the notification, the next step is to indicate that this notification is in JSON, and then we make a HTTP request to the webhook using the notification we described before, as well as the headers. So as you can see here, we use a variable. Why? Well, because we don't want to put the webhook link right into the code, otherwise everybody is able to see it. So instead, we want to store this webhook in an Airflow variable, and that's exactly what we're going to do right now. On the Airflow UI, go to admin and variables, then create a new variable and call it teams webhook secret, as we want to hide the value from the Airflow UI, and paste your webhook, then click on save. So once you have this variable stored and encrypted, as you can see here, you can go back to the code and at the top of the file, we import variables from Airflow models like that. Okay, so the last step is to print another message at the end. So after we sent the notification, just to actually indicate that we sent the notification. And this is useful again to know where we sent the notification in the scheduler logs perfect for debugging if this function has some issues. All right, so save the file and then we can go back to the DAG as we have successfully implemented the notification function. So here to call this notification function, we want to use a callback in the DAG object called on failure callback, and then we call notify teams. And obviously we need to import it first. So from include, notifications import notify teams. And just like that, you have successfully implemented a notification system so you can receive notifications from Airflow into Microsoft Teams. Let's verify if it works. And for that, you go to the Airflow UI and then click on the DAG and trigger it by clicking here, then wait a little bit. And as you can see, the task has failed and so the DAG run. And if you go to Microsoft Teams, you should see the notification as expected. Airflow task failed with the name of the task, as well as the DAG, the logical date, and the URL to the task logs. And if you want to see the task logs, you just need to click on that button. And congratulations, 
you are able to receive notifications from Airflow into Microsoft Teams. That was great, but there is a better way to send notifications from Airflow to any notification services you want. Indeed, what if instead of Teams, you want to send notifications to Slack now or using SMTP? Well, the thing is, you will need to reinvent the wheel each time you want to send notifications to a new notification service. And this is not convenient. That's why in Airflow 2.6, there is a new concept called Notifier. And the Notifier is nothing more than an object that encapsulates the logic to send notifications to a specific notification service. For example, if you go on the documentation, you will see this list of notifiers, for example, Jira, Discord, Slack, or SMTP, to send notifications to those different services. But in our case, we will focus on AppRise. AppRise is truly amazing. Why? Well, because with AppRise, you are able to send a notification to almost all of the most popular notification services available to you, such as Telegram, Discord, Slack, and Teams. So that means if you want to change from Teams to Slack or Slack to SMTP or SMTP to Discord, then you will just need to change the settings in AppRise and that's it. No need to change the code, which is pretty amazing. So let's discover the notifier AppRise in the rest of the video. Okay, the first step is to install the AppRise provider. So for that, you copy the name of the provider and then in requirements, you paste the name with the version 122 as specified here and then save the file and you restart your Airflow instance to make sure that the provider is installed. Next, go back to the Airflow UI and then admin connections, create a new connection. Let's call it notifier. And the connection type is AppRise. So you should see AppRise here. And now you need to specify the config. So basically using this JSON, you need to put the webhook like that. And then for the tag, you can keep alerts. Tags are useful to identify different notification services that you want to use through AppRise. In this case, we only have one, so let's say alerts here. And then you can copy that and paste it here and click on save. So just like that, you have successfully configured AppRise and you are ready to send notifications to Teams. Let's go back to the DAG file and import the send AppRise notification function by typing from Airflow providers AppRise notifications, AppRise import send AppRise notification. Then under it, import notify type from AppRise, like that. And then instead of the notify teams function for the on failure callback, we want to use the send AppRise notification. So here you call send AppRise notification. And for the parameters, we can specify a title, Airflow task failed. Then for the body, we indicate the task instance that failed with the name, the DAG ID, and the date. And finally, the notify type is failure as this notification is sent in case of a failure. Don't forget to specify the connection ID that we've defined in the Airflow UI. So here, AppRise con ID equals to notifier. Okay, remember that we've created this connection in Airflow, so notifier. And then we specify the tag, which is alerts, as we defined in the connection again. So now you save the file and you can check if it works. On the Airflow UI, go to DAGs and then my DAG, trigger the DAG, wait a little bit. Okay, perfect. Let's see on Microsoft Teams. And we have an alert as expected. If you click on see more, you can see the task B from the DAG, my DAG, with the following date that failed. So congratulations, because at this point you have successfully implemented a notifier using AppRise, so you can send notifications to Microsoft Teams, but you can send notifications to any notification services you want. The only thing you will need to do is to modify the connection AppRise that we've created here by adding your services as shown right there. It is as simple as that, and that's why AppRise and notifiers are truly amazing. That's it for this video. Don't forget that you will find the code and everything in the link in the description below. And I wish you a wonderful day. Take care and see you for another one.